Hey everybody, Syntax77 here. Back with you on a nice sunny day doing another kind of responding to a comment conversational sort of video. I actually just got back, in fact, last night, my wife and I from a backpacking and vacation trip up in the Adirondacks of New York. Book ended it with a couple days of what I call regular vacation style hotel sightseeing around the Lake George area. So that was a lot of fun. Now, some of you are probably going to comment, where's Big South Fork part two? Don't worry, it's coming. Matter of fact, I've had that comment since probably the second day the video was out. And I do consider it a compliment that you wanna see that video, but for those feature length videos, it really does require at least to put out the video that you're used to seeing more editing time and creativity, which is something I've learned not to rush. So don't worry. That's coming, but as I go, I like to kind of throw out these videos. They're fun for me and hopefully for some of you too. So the comment that I got, or the question, was on the Kuban Hex Tarp uh, video that I did where Mike and I were debating the various options, if you will, and considerations. And somebody posted on that, it was actually Chuck C. So thank you, Chuck C, for the comment and question. And he said, I've been buying my gear spread out so the wife won't kill me. Rank these in the order you would buy. Kuban fiber tarp, down under quilt, down top quilt, hammock, and backpack. Now, he doesn't specify on here, but I'm assuming he means upgrades because some of the items on here, of course, you would need to backpack, right? Especially the backpack itself and if you're hammock camping which is what he's referring to you would definitely need a hammock so i'm going to kind of view this from the perspective of what i went through which was i started out and i think a lot of people probably go through the same process i started out kind of traditional camping with a tent and then i slowly migrated into hammock camping so that what I ended up doing was upgrading and swapping out and kind of altering some of my gear as I went along. I think a lot of people probably go through this, although probably less so now than when I started, hard to believe, but six years ago, I started out as a tent camper and then started getting into hammock camping. And back then, I think it was a lot less popular, or I should say it's getting a lot more popular now than it was six years ago. So there may be people out there who jump right into hammock camping, skip over the kind of traditional tent camping, backpacking, but I think this is still kind of prevalent. So I'm going to go from the perspective of somebody who's doing that. Although hopefully this will still be useful to somebody who has no gear and they may be looking at it from the perspective and perhaps Chuck C is talking about this too. They might be thinking from the perspective of I'm going to pick certain items that I'm going to spend more money on and get the higher quality item now. And then for other items, I'll buy maybe a budget version or not necessarily a super high end version. And then later on over the years, I can swap that out or upgrade it. So I think this will kind of apply to both. And as I go, of course, I'd be really interested if you guys would post in the comment section your own kind of ranking of how you would rank these items. No need to get crazy with details if you don't want to, although if you do, that'd be really cool with explanations, but maybe just throw up a list of your own personal ranking for each item. So. Let's go here. Now, I'll probably, at this point, I've gone through the whole process, so I can tell you what I've done and then if I would do it differently. So, what I, let's see, what did I upgrade first? It was not the backpack, although I should point out, and I didn't necessarily do this back then, but a really basic and straightforward way to get started on choosing what to upgrade, especially if you're looking to shed weight, which is a whole other subject. Some of this is about comfort and convenience and fun, but if you're looking to shave weight, if that's your priority, then really just sit down and look at all the different upgrades, say for five different pieces of potential gear, and look at the weight savings, and then look at how much the cost is, and you can literally find out a cost per ounce on weight savings. And you might find out that, yeah, that Kuban Hex Tarp is super cool, and it'll save me a pound and a half on my tarp, but it's gonna cost me $235, and upgrading my backpack will save me five pounds, and that will cost me $220. So keep that in mind as you go, if that is a priority for you, weight and money, which I think for a lot of people it is. Me personally, I did not start with the backpack. What did I upgrade first? Oh, okay, this answers number one right here. Just popped in my head, makes perfect sense. Number one, the hammock. Okay, if you're a tent camper and you want to get into hammock camping, the first thing you want to do is buy a hammock. If you haven't started at all, but you're interested in hammock camping, 
get the hammocks. Because number one, you can't hammock camp without a hammock. And number two, once you get that hammock, which is what happened to me, you will start to find out what is important to you. So take that into consideration too. I'm about to tell you my opinions on this, but when you get your own hammock, you're gonna find out what works for you. So get that hammock first. Now, of course, you could go with that as well, high end or budget. You can get a budget hammock right at probably your local sporting goods store, or you could get what I'd call a minimalist hammock, wouldn't even call it a budget hammock, just by going to one of the cottage vendors and picking out like a say, a very bare bones hammock. If you're doing cooler weather, you could even get just a hammock body, no bug net, and then eventually buy a separate bug net down the road, or just go all in. If you really want to start with that first piece of gear, which I think might be the hammock being top quality, then just go with like a custom dream hammock, a Dutchware chameleon, Dutchware half wit. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff out there that you can go super high end with the hammock or keep it simple. But either way, my number one would be the hammock. So what else is on the list here? Tarp, under or top quilt, backpack, hammock. I think the next thing I did, okay, let's think about this. So when I got the hammock, then I realized, okay, I need insulation underneath of me and I need it on top. So what I did at the time was, and if you're already a tent camper, this is great. Just take your pad that you're already tent camping with, a foam pad or inflatable, and I just put that in the hammock with me. That worked fine for a while. Now I had a single layer hammock as my first hammock, so that's not super ideal. It does shift around, but I did it for a while and it worked just fine. Although, keep in consideration, if you want to use a pad and make it even more convenient, you could invest in a double layer hammock as your number one item instead of a single layer, which the main reason for that usually is you can slip a pad in there. But I will say, if you're looking to eventually go to an underquilt, I'd probably skip that and just go with a single layer. It's gonna be half the weight, right? That makes sense. And you're gonna get by on it, at least I did. So that kind of nixes out the underquilt. That's what I did. I stuck with the pad. The next thing that I believe I did was, oh shoot, I don't know if it was backpack or underquilt, but I'll just go from my perspective now. Backpack or underquilt? Well, What's gonna save you more weight? Now again, this whole video isn't about weight savings. It's about fun and hammock camping and whatnot. But for me, that is important and it certainly was at the time. So I upgraded my backpack. I had a five-ish, maybe six pound EMS pack that now I use for winter camping that I was using for summer camping. And I upgraded to an Osprey Hornet 46. I got it for like 120 bucks and it dropped my weight on the pack down to a pound and a half, 24 ounces pretty crazy the weight say I mean that's more than half that's down like four or five pounds from what I was carrying before that saved me a lot of weight and it also this is another bonus of upgrading your pack if you're looking at weight savings that smaller pack was 46 liters versus 70 on my other pack it really forced me to start thinking weight consciously and I say weight consciously, not necessarily ultralight, but just be conscious of what you're bringing. You can have a 40 pound pack if you want, but you know, just know what you're bringing, or at least I suggest to know what you're bringing, think about each item. And for me, having that smaller pack forced me to really kind of not just throw the whole kitchen sink in there, which by the way, on my first backpacking trip, we really did bring a kitchen sink to wash dishes in. Kind of ridiculous. Anyway, so I go with the backpack next. Again though, if you're starting from scratch, maybe don't have to go super high end. You could, I did a video recently on the Scandinavian gear, $60 backpack, it's like 70 liters. You could use it later for winter camping after say two years from now, you upgrade to a lighter pack. That's gonna be like 60 bucks to start. So just something to think about, but that's what I'm gonna do. So far we got hammock, then backpack. You wonder, you might be wondering, but wait, I need a top quilt. I didn't really mention that. You don't need to upgrade, or at least I didn't need to upgrade that right away because the sleeping bag that I already had was super fine and if you don't already have a sleeping bag well you can get one on Amazon a synthetic one it's not gonna be the lightest in the world It'd be around three pounds it's exactly what I did even for tent camping it was 35 bucks so even if you know you're gonna buy an under uh, top quilt pardon me down the road the synthetic sleeping bag for $35 is fine and then I think you'll find yourself either lending it to a friend to try to convince them and drag them into the woods someday or I use it for my dog now so that's not a huge investment so you can put off the top quilt. That's how I'm getting away with that on this list here. Use a sleeping bag. It's gonna be about twice to three times the weight, but it is possible. So that brings me to the next upgrade that I would do, which is, and it is what I did do in real life, I got the down under quilt before the top quilt. Cause like I said, I'm using the sleeping bag as the top quilt. So 
under quilt is what I did next because that allowed me to get rid of the bulk of carrying that sleeping pad around. I used the Thermalite Z light, which also is a $40 item, so a good way to get started for cheap, and you'll you'll use it later for tent camping when the need does arise. Sometimes I go to the desert, there are no trees. So I still use that pad for 40 bucks for the last 60 years now, great investment. But eventually I wanted to get rid of that bulk and Eh, I th it wasn't necessarily a huge weight savings. I think my pad was 14 ounces at the time and my first under quilt was actually 20 ounces because I got a thicker grade fabric on it. Although the one I use now is 14 ounces and that's super light than my 30 degree Phoenix guy. So about the same weight. The main thing with the under quilt, at least for me, and I think compared to a pad for a lot of people, is not the weight savings, but the convenience and comfort you put that thing on the outside you dial it in you lock it in place there's no more pad sliding around and it also packs down really small in your backpack instead of having that big old pad hanging off your pack so that's what i would do next is the under quilt which brings us down to two items you're down to the down top quilt or the kuban fiber tarp what did i do next i don't know if it was the right thing to do especially going back to the um, cost versus weight savings thing but i know at the time I'm pretty sure I got the top quilt before I upgraded my tarp from ni still nylon to Kuban fiber. If I didn't, I'll just tell you my perspective on it now. Let's think about this. Well, let's just talk about why I did it then. At the time, once I got that under quilt, I did get super excited by how nice that was, and I got mine from Hammock Gear. I got really excited. It was like just nice quality stuff. I felt like I was really starting to evolve into an actual hammock camper and I liked it. So I instantly started looking into how I could save up for a top quilt. And eventually that was, I believe it was my next item. I got the top quilt. It was a 40 degree model and I really liked it. And then at that point, that did save me a lot of weight. So in retrospect, if I was concerned with just weight savings for the money versus convenience, maybe I should have ditched the sleeping bag, the three pound, three and a half pound synthetic sleeping bag and went for the top quilt because I think that was around 14 ounces versus that three and a half pounds. But for the other reasons, I went with the under quilt first. Anyway, once I went to the top quilt, it really got my weight down. It got my uh, volume down. The thing packs down like this, especially for the 40 degree model. Of course, there's a lot of choices on that, but that's a whole nother video or subject and it was just convenient and nice because instead of trying to slip into the sleeping bag or kind of unzip it and have it over me, but there's still a footbox that doesn't unzip all the way and all the extra bulk in there, I was able to have a real top quilt and I just loved it. So that's nice. I would say that's the next thing on the list, which by default leaves the last thing, the Kuban fiber tarp, although we could debate whether or not to swap these last two. Kuban fiber tarp though was four me, a lot of sticker shock, and I think for a lot of people, sticker shock. So maybe with my mindset and knowing the value of a Kuban tarp, at least to me, knowing that now, maybe if I could go back in the past, I would have changed my order. But I think this is probably the same for a lot of people. I upgraded that last because honestly, my Sil Nylon tarp was getting the job done. The weight savings was significant, but I'm pretty sure I saved more weight with the other items I just laid out although I could be wrong I don't have my calculator to go over all of it but that's the way I did it and I won't go too far into the reasons for that decision because I just did what last week a whole video on that so if you haven't seen that feel free to check that out where Mike and I talk all about the pros and cons of Kuban fiber and why I made that leap etc but that's the last item that I upgraded to we'll say now though it's been probably three years since I've done that and I still haven't upgraded the tarp for my wife now, it's not because I'm being mean to my wife. What I do is we have my old uh, Hennessy Sil Nylon tarp, which is considerably bulky and heavy compared to the Kuban Hex, but I just bring that and the Kuban. I carry the big bulky Hennessy and she carries the Kuban. When we get to camp, we actually swap because that one's bigger. It gives her more coverage. It's just, that's just what I do. I give her that one since we have it there, but we still haven't upgraded that. It's just one of those things. It is hard to bite the bullet on upgrading those Kubans, especially when there's other items to look at. And of course, not everything in life is about backpacking too. So there's other bills to pay, but eventually I'll probably upgrade that. So yeah, I guess that does prove that it makes sense that that was my last item on this list because I haven't even upgraded my second one for our outings when my wife and I go out. 
So I think that pretty much wraps up my opinion on going over these different items. And of course, I will mention again, this is just me and my opinion. I really kind of make these videos for fun and to get some conversation going. So like I said earlier in the video, please feel free to post your list of how you would prioritize this gear. And it'll probably make me change the way I think about it too. And maybe it'll help Chuck C make a decision as well. So yeah, I think that about covers it. Till next time, I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there.